Greetings everyone, it's Reed here, and it's a lovely morning, so I decided to get up, sit down in here, and make a quick video for everyone. I decided we're going to do another episode of Solar Boot Camp. We're going to talk about a key fundamental thing, electrical wiring. Important thing to know about when you're wiring solar stuff up and doing things with it. And I was thinking, oh, we're going to talk about this, we're going to talk about that, go over all these important concepts. And then I realized, let's cut this down to one specific topic, focus on one thing of wiring today, so people get some time to percolate, process the information, and then they'll be ready for the next thing we're going to discuss. So today's topic, AC rated wire versus GC rated wire. Now, for all the electricians out there, you're probably going, huh? What are you on about? Exactly. What am I on about? Well, lots of conversations. I've seen people leave comments, live streams and stuff. We see these comments go by, people say something, and they're talking about, oh, you need this wire for AC current and this wire for DC and stuff. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, let's look at some various wires. Okay. Here is good old wire I've used a bunch. It's 14 gauge, THHN, and, uh, you know, Standard wire you'd use for wiring up a branch circuit and stuff like that. Um, things. I use this for wiring up lots of lighting and stuff. Yeah. Spools of that. Okay. That's cool. No problem there. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Here we go. We got two spools here of USE-2 wire. Meaning I can use it outside on solar panels and it's perfectly rated for that. Uh, there's a couple caveats on that, but yeah. This is good to go. So I got USE rated 2 wire, 10 gauge. Stranded, nice and flexible. And here we go. This is PV wire. Ooh, more solar panel stuff, right? You know, and stuff. And this is 12 gauge, stranded, nice and flexible, easy to work with. Like this wire. Mm hmm. You know, so that. And then let's see what else we got here. Oh, we've got some UL listed boat wire, meaning. This is 10 gauge, fine stranded, tinned copper wire. Ooh, very useful, good for a lot of things. Uh, not so much residential. This is when I'm dealing with wet environments of very specific nature, okay? So you're not gonna, don't go running out buying boat wire for things, guys. <laughs> but I'm using this as an example, okay? So we got these various types of wire here. And let's see, oh yeah, here, what you see at the auto parts store. This is primary wire, you know, stuff like that. Okay, so what is which of these wires is AC wire, you know, like it, this XH, I mean, XHHW wire, you know, six gauge. Is this for AC wire or DC wire? What about the solar panel wire, you know, USC2 and PV wire? Is that only for DC or AC circuits? Yeah, good question, right? Well, turns out, n neither. <laughs> they work on both. They work on AC and DC. Uh, what matters is the insulation rating, okay? So if you look at your wire, you know, you get a wire, and you look at the jacket, any UL listed recognized wire that you can use for wiring up your house and other stuff like that, will have a jacket with the insulation type and the voltage rating okay it also say the size so like this says use-2 or rhh or rhw-2 those are the insulation types that means if you look in the nec and here i'll pop up one of the tables and you can see there at the top okay and you look at the top up there it shows there's various different insulation types you see thhn thwn and what those are is they tell you that this wire with this insulation this gauge is rated to 600 volts or less and how many amps it can carry all right it does not care about ac versus dc there is no difference between ac and dc current when we're dealing with like 2000 volts and less and for a lot for our wiring jobs right as most solar panel setups especially in the residential area. Uh, we're not going over 600 volts in the residential section. Uh, only a couple places will let you go over 600 volts and you ain't going over 2000 volts. Uh, you get up to there, that is commercial grade, 2000 volts. Uh, those circuits can be dangerous if you can if you can imagine. Yeah, 2000 volts, yeah, a little dangerous. <laughs> Care must be taken with working with them, shall we say. 
Um, but you know, 600 volts or less. Yeah. You'll run and do that easy. And it doesn't matter. It's AC, DC. As long as you're under the voltage rating of the wire, you're good. Yeah. I know. I know. People have said, Oh, you need this kind of wire for DC. Nope. You need this kind of wire for AC. Nope. Uh, no, the electric code does not care. It needs to be UL listed, UL recognized wire. It needs to have the proper markings on it like this does. And uh, you will pass your inspection. Yeah, that's what it is. And it has to be used in the proper locations. Like if the wire is rated for wet environments, it has to be adjusted for the ambient temperature coefficients and everything else and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but basically the point of this video, DC wire versus AC wire, uh, they're the same. They are the same, okay? Now, I do want to bring up something like this, like the auto parts wire, right? Primary wire, you can go get the auto parts store. Uh, this is not recognized for use in your home, okay? There's no markings on it for UL recognition. There's nothing on the label saying it's UL recognized and so on and so forth. Uh, you could maybe use this in certain applications, you know, if the stranding may not be right or something like that, but you, maybe you could use it, right? Uh, inspector sees it, yeah. Uh, it could also be dangerous. There are major important considerations in wire when dealing with these things, okay? So if you're doing solar panel work, other things like that, you need to be careful of the wire. Uh, I would say go buy the appropriate wire for the job at hand, but DC versus AC, no difference. You know, PV wire here and such. Yeah, we got no big things. This can run carry DC current, carry AC current, you know what I mean? either switch over there you know this stuff you know six gauge wire i got here yeah i can run it with dc i can run it with ac doesn't matter yeah i know i'm saying this over and over again but that's the point wiring is based on voltage and the reason it's based on voltage is because it matters on the insulation jacket so based on what the insulation is made out of how thick it is and everything else that determines how much voltage it can deal with because the voltage is determining the shall we say, the strength behind how much that uh, electrons that are behind in that wire want to jump through the insulation and then shock the holy crud out of you, right? And, you know, so the insulation can be a lot thicker, stuff like that, uh, for, you know, dealing with outside. You can have, like, cuts, scrapes, and all that. So if it's ready for outside, direct exposure, direct burial, you know, it'll be thicker, stuff like that, to count, you know, people digging around it and stuff like that. Um, stuff that needs to be in conduits inside the house, you know, like this. Uh, yeah, it has to be protected. The insulation is thicker. But they put safety margins in on that stuff, figuring how it's used, how it's protected, how it's installed, and all those other things. And as long as you're under the voltage rating, your nominal system voltage, yeah, you're good. Now, if you go over 600 volts, is this stuff suddenly going to electrocute you and just kill you? No. See, there's also a safety margin, like I was saying. These things can take pretty good spikes in voltages because we have surges. That's why we have surge suppressors out there. But there's surges, like, you know, a power edge when they bring the power back on. Yeah, there's a pretty good surge. Stuff like that. Lightning strikes nearby can make some pretty good surges. These things can actually go, you know, 10,000, 15,000 volts. When we do something called a megger, and we're testing our wire installations, what we're looking for is breaks in the insulation and see if we're violating the safety margins. For a lot of feeders and big runs, especially in commercial grade buildings, we use a mega to check it out, okay? And it's gonna run a high voltage. 10,000 volts is usually the test voltage we use to see if we get leakage currents, meaning currents breaking through the insulation, going through the ground path, and you know, heading out. Uh, that usually means you got to pull the wire out and reinstall it if you're getting a certain over a certain value, so many millivolts. And you know, it shows, yeah, this is where it's breaking out. And it's important because you don't want active electricity going through the ground path and risking shocks. It also means surges and all that stuff could break through the wire. So the point being, do you have to get specific wire for DC circuits? Do you need specific wire for AC circuits? No. The wire is interchangeable. Don't get confused about this at all the wire is interchangeable as long as we're under the voltage the wire is safe to use okay now we'll cover lots of other things about wire in the future but for now remember this dc wire ac wire nope no worries just pick the wire that has the right insulation and the right voltage for what you're working with and since we're 
all going to be working under 600 volts for the things I'm going to cover in this series. Uh, pretty much every wire you go by will be just fine as long as it's UL listed, UL marked, UL recognized. Okay, stay out of the auto parts store. Don't go buy a bunch of welding wire and other stuff like that. There's issues related to that. And we'll be covering that in the future. But for now, digest this. AC wire, DC wire, same thing. Okay. Take care, everyone. This is Reed. Out for now.